All right, so a short disclaimer before this movie starts, uh, and an explanation of what is Applejack. Applejack is a colonial period uh, higher alcohol. Like, they made ciders, they made beers, they made wines. If you take a cider, beer, or wine, and you freeze it, you take it outside, bury it in the ground in the wintertime, it's going to freeze. The alcohol will not freeze. So you can dump off the alcohol from, say, a 17% wine, uh, which is what I made, a 17% wine, 17% alcohol wine. Uh, you can dump off the alcohol, leaving the frozen water behind. It, 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 uh, it jacks up the alcohol, hence the name Apple Jack. So you make it with apples and you jack it up, right? That's the deal. That's what Apple Jack is. Very, very much illegal in the U.S. You can't make apple jack. You can't freeze or distill anything. You can't, you can't, you know, like use a, a fractal distillation or any kind of uh, heat distillation. It's very illegal. Ten years minimum in jail. Not sure about the freezer distillation, uh, what the law is on that. Don't agree with it, but I don't agree with paying taxes either. But I don't want to go to jail for either. So I did not make apple jack. I, I, I creative ending to this movie about how I saw and I experienced and I, I developed this whole thing to see if it works and it, it freaking works it's awesome so 1974 October 12th or October 14th I'm not sure which Jimmy Carter made it legal to make uh, beer and wine in the household <laughs> And you can make up to 200 gallons of beer, 200 gallons of wine, for personal consumption. Kind of unhealthy. I mean, I don't think Jimmy was, was a bad guy. He's building houses for the homeless, so thanks, Jimmy, for the, you know, the law, for the what I'm doing here, and for the houses. Good guy, Jimmy Carter, for the most part. I enjoy my freedom too much. I'm not making Applejack. I made some wine. It's going to be a year before this stuff's ready because I made it at such a high alcohol content. But it's wine. That's all I'm making. But I'm going to show you the concept. And I'm going to actually sh physically show you how to make Applejack in a very creative way. So stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. So as you watch me do this, run the wine through the strainer. This wine that I made was a pineapple banana wine. And the idea behind it is that the yeast that is within the pineapple and on the cap, like the, uh, the surface cap, which contains most of the yeast, will start a new fermentation very actively because the yeast are very, very active within those little bits of pineapple like there's you know you, you buy a little packet of yeast and way more live yeast active yeast in that pineapple than in those little sachets sachets i think that's what they're called the yeast that i originally used for the uh the pineapple banana wine was uh lavalin 71b112 a wine yeast, a cider yeast, any any wine yeast or cider yeast or even a beer yeast would probably work. Do not use bread yeast. Do not, I can't stress this enough, do not use bread yeast. So the yeast that I am using was originally pitched 71B112 Lavalin brand. You can find it at any homebrew shop. It's very common. Good, good white wine yeast. That's what I used. And I used it because it was in a very, very, very high concentration. And the ciders that I had, one of the gallons of ciders had uh, ascorbic acid. And the other two had uh, potassium sorbate. The potassium sorbate, you can neutralize potassium sorbate with heat. Okay, potassium sorbate and ascorbic acid both deter oxidation and bacterial growth, fermentation, all that kind of stuff. So the manufacturers of 
the ciders add this to it to, to increase the shelf life. So if you just pitch a normal yeast in it, and that, that's not why I'm saying don't use bread yeast. Don't use bread yeast because it stays alive in your gut and it can be very, very, uh, very bad. Very bad for, for a long time. Found that out the hard way. I did. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, so, we added, without heating up the potassium sorbate, without overly oxygenating the uh, ascorbic acid, which will eliminate the ascorbic acid. If you oxygenate ascorbic acid, it eliminates the ascorbic acid. If you heat up the it neutral the uh, potassium sulfate, it eliminates the potassium sulfate. So, without doing either of them, I added enough yeast to it and held the temperature right where it needed to be, oxygenated it, took, took really good care of these yeast, and I got a great result. So, that's I had I had to break into this to this movie and explain that to you because I really didn't explain it too well when I was when I was making the movie so that's it enjoy the rest of the movie I think there's some fishing in this movie too so enjoy the fishing as well up from the car boy it can bubble out but no air can get back into it hence the name airlock and really a difficult thing to use that's it that's the airlock so that's gonna sit going to sit for um, probably a month or two. But the next thing I'm going to do is going to be, uh, this is actually not taking that long. Not taking that long at all. Hang on a minute. Let me adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. This floor is going to be like a freaking movie theater. Kind of sticky. Kind of sticky a lot. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and just dump these in. I mean, I think it's going to be that easy. It'll ferment eventually. And I think what I'm going to do is add some cinnamon sticks to it. Cinnamon sticks and... Um, What are you going to add to it, Jim? Cinnamon stick. Oh, and some sugar. We're going to increase the alcohol a little bit. By adding some sugar. I haven't taken the gravity of this one. But those are 0 .050. Or 1.050. And point, or 1.050 will give you a, a, an alcohol content of, I think, like 6%. Or, I don't know if it ferments dry. About six percent. I want it to be, you know, like if I was going to be making Applejack, I'd want it to be up around twelve percent alcohol. So when it is distilled by the freezer, that alcohol will double. So twenty-four percent alcohol. That's about that's about the alcohol alcohol content of brandy. So we'll let this take off. I don't want to stress the yeast by putting the sugar in too soon. I want this to take off. These are refrigerated too, so we're going to have quite a long lag period here. Which is why it's imperative that this is sanitized. Carb or the uh, primary fermenter must be sanitized. But yeah, that's it. So we're going to go ahead and put the lid on this. Alright. And... I mean, it doesn't really need it, but I, I grabbed an airlock, an airlock, and uh, there's a there's a bobber around here. I mean, a um, a bobber. Yeah, there's a uh, stopper around here. Oh yeah, it's in there. It's in there already, Jim. So we'll get this one set up. Like I said, we don't really need it, but because there's going to be a significant lag time. We should probably use it. That's it. Pineapple. Pineapple banana wine. And now the theoretical makings to Applejack. I'm going to add that to the apple cider. But I'm going to show you how you would do it if you want.
wanted to break the law and make an alcoholic beverage. I mean, I can't imagine why you'd want to do that, but this is how you do it. It's real easy. So our, our theoretical Applejack is fermenting nicely. It's been a couple of days and uh, wrong spot. <clears throat> it's been a couple of days and I, I have the, the cap on the top and it's fermenting nicely. Take my word for it, it's fermenting nicely. So in theory, well in, in, in practical terms, this apple juice would only produce a an alcohol of uh, what is it? You know, five O was the hydrometer reading. So it would only make six point five percent alcohol. And if you were to make Applejack with something like this, which is highly illegal, and I, I'm not going to be doing it. I just want to make that very clear. I'm not making Applejack. I'm just showing you how, if you wanted to do it. That's up to you. Totally up to you. Don't do it. It's terrible. It's highly illegal. Um, so every time you freeze it, which is the process by which you increase the alcohol, it doubles the alcohol, roughly, probably a little less than doubles the alcohol. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to syrup feed it. All right. We're going to feed it some syrup and I got that set up over there. Um, we're going to give it five pounds of syrup. So I, I'll show you the math in a minute. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, pretty boring kind of stuff, but, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you how to syrup feed it, show you how to invert sugar, invert sugar to make it more digestible to the yeast here, because we're going to pump it up quite a bit, uh, from 6.5 to, I think, 14 to 16% alcohol. So then when it, in theory, was to freeze, and we take the ice crystals off, increasing the alcohol, it'll double. So, we, you know, maybe we'll only have to freeze it once, in theory to get a higher alcohol product instead of having to possibly freeze it twice in theory just theory that's all i'll show you it's pretty creative how i how i have this planned so that it's uh within a legality but you know this is going to be a wine that's all it is it's going to be a dessert wine it's going to be very high alcohol uh, sweetened dessert wine, spiced wine, kind of like the one over there, uh, that one, kind of like that one, the spiced cider, it's not quite as complex as that, but I'll show you the math in one minute. Alright, so, uh, so sugar is essentially a, a starch, it is a starch, and it's a, it's a long chained starch, alright, let me dump this in, I'll explain it to you in a minute. So sugar is a long chain starch, and the yeast, and I think about uh, possibly eating grass, or a branch, I think that, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good way to explain it. So like if you had to eat a branch, it, it would be extremely beneficial if you could break that branch up into smaller bite-sized portions. That's what we're doing with the starch. We're taking that branch and we're cutting it into like wood chips. So for the yeast, we're going to make the yeast happy. We're going to go ahead and break this up so that the yeast can easily digest this. We don't want to stress the yeast because then the yeast make higher alcohols. Acetone, I, there's a bunch of different higher alcohols, but that was five pounds of sugar and probably half a gallon of water boiling when it comes back to a boil we're going to time 15 minutes and this is uh, citric acid you could use a lemon you could squeeze like a lemon in it I don't have a lemon so I'm going to use citric acid and we'll let that boil for 15 minutes and that is invert sugar uh, we don't want to add that hot to the must to the wine that we're making we want to Cool it off, which won't be a problem today because it's it's four freaking degrees outside. That's why I'm not fishing. That's why I'm here doing this 
absolute nonsense. And I actually, I got my easel set up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, uh, a woodcut. I'm gonna show you what, what a woodcut is in a minute. But first, the math, and maybe I'll put some fishing in there to keep it interesting, or maybe you won't find the fishing interesting. But I'm gonna put fishing in it anyway. All right, so we've been boiling for about five or six minutes there. Um, here's the math. Hopefully there's some fishing I'll show you over there or over there. Don't know. So the original recipe was three gallons. And the hydrometer, after I, I uh, poured all the stuff into it, read uh, 0.050. And that's 1.050 but if you get rid of the one it makes this a whole lot easier so we just added five gallons or I'm sorry five pounds of sugar and the gravity one pound of sugar in one gallon of water yields 0 0.045 so if we multiply five by point oh four five out we get point two two five now if we take point two two five and we divide it by three we get point zero uh, seven five okay now if we add the point zero seven five back to the point oh five oh then we get point one two five and looking at my chart here I mean my chart doesn't go up that high so I think I'm in trouble here but uh, 1.100 is 14 percent and then 0.25 is 3 percent alcohol 14 percent 3 percent it's gonna be 17 percent so if we were to freeze it that would double uh, roughly uh, conditions permitting a uh, like best case scenario it should double roughly but that's why we're going up to that I don't think the yeast can survive much past that this strain of yeast anyway there's yeast that can go up to 23 24 I think uh, oh is it Sam Adams has one that goes up to uh, 26 they, they typically die out between 14, 19, 21, 23, somewhere in there. You don't want to stress the yeast out too much, uh, which is why I didn't add all the sugar at once. If I added all the sugar to the original 0 .050 with the potassium sorbate, the ascorbic acid, it would have stressed the yeast out big time and we would have gotten a bunch of off flavors but I have a very very active fermentation I could add I could dribble this <clears throat> this five pounds of sugar in you know like add a pound a day or you know like a four cups a day a cup a day something like that and that would be much better but I don't have the patience I got a lot of other stuff going on I have the easel set up and this was one of my good pieces of paper here I hope you appreciate the math and the fishing I don't know what I'm going to put up there, but got to entertain myself somehow while, while I'm editing. So uh, I think I'm going to do I'm going to do a woodcut. I like this. I like this shell. It's pretty awesome. It's going to translate really well to black and white woodcut. It's going to be awesome. I'm not sure what angle I'm going to take on it, but yeah, yeah I'm inspired. I'm going to make a woodcut of this. You're going to see how I make it. Hopefully, unless I fall asleep first because I'm uh, rather tired. Oh, yeah, and, and, you know, like, if you're watching the... So if you're watching the movie for uh, how to make Applejack in theory, how to make Applejack in theory, check out the, the movie for uh, what is a woodcut? What is a woodcut? And that's an endive. Uh, it's not an endive murex. I, I don't know what kind of what what exact nomenclature they attach to that shell, but 
I'll include it in the video somewhere. So be sure and check that out if you're, you know, into art or want to see some more nonsense. All right, so the uh, invert sugar has uh, chilled out overnight, and it is chilled, ready to go. It's gonna fizz up a little bit here. We're gonna stir it in. <clears throat> Surprised it's not thicker. I was kind of even thinking it might be crystallized this morning. I think it is four degrees out this morning. It's supposed to be 50 mile an hour winds. Beautiful day. I love the winter time. That's it. So that's going to ferment probably for another week before all that sugar gets digested. I want to pay attention to the, the odor of this. Because it will produce uh, sulfides because we've we've now stressed the yeast out so we're gonna have to stir this oxygenate it pretty frequently uh, twice a day wow that's thick that's really thick now um, yeah we're gonna have to keep an eye on it and if we have any problems any trouble I'll uh, explain what to do about those trouble and or problems that's it for now it for now. All right, so the the fermentation of the theoretical <coughs> Applejack is going very, very well. I haven't taken a, a hydrometer reading, but I'll just tell it's going to be done in a few days. Uh, today's the 8th. I sugar fed it on the 6th. So it's been two or three days. Probably sugar fed it. Early in the AM. It's late in the PM. In the ice storm of 2018. And there you over there. I got seven hours into this. Why do you have a blast shield on? The last time I did it, I hit myself in the eye. You really don't want to say nah, that. No, I just wanted to get a close up of the blast get shield. All the way back there. All right, you're good. Oh no way! I thought maybe I. Ow! <laughs> what about overhand, dude? Well, that's what I did last time. Ah, oh, dude, I'm gonna hurt myself bad. How do you not hit yourself with this? I don't hear. Let me try it. I don't know if you should. Come try on. It. I've had just enough caffeine and hash to try this and make it. Oh no! That's ridiculous. All right, let me see this. Thing. Yeah, give that a shot. Here, hold this. Here, take this. You're gonna need it. I want to stand way back. You see that? Huh? You see how it comes back towards you? It's scary. It cracked. Yeah, it did. Woo! I still need to get it cracked. <clears throat> that was fun. So I got the, uh, <clears throat> this is ready to rack the theoretical, oh, it smells good, uh, the theoretical, uh, Applejack is ready to filter from this and put in bottles. So I have a sanitized funnel and a sanitized filtration medium, somewhat very large filtration. Uh, oh, yep. And so this um, clears out a little faster. I have um, one cup of near boiling water. And I'm going to add to that well, what's called a fining agent. The fining agent that I'm using is, is bentonite. Fining agents. <clears throat> I don't profess to be, to be an expert on any of this stuff. I'll share with you what I know. And if I leave any of these finding agents out, please leave a comment in the, in the uh, down below, down below. 
uh, finding agents are positively and uh, negatively charged particles that when you add them to a, a fermentation that is finished and I did make a mistake with the bentonite and you'll see this in a minute I added it to an active fermentation still worked but it took a little bit longer probably didn't work as well as it should have because there was the agitation that, uh, amongst the uh, the molecules which probably increased you know the polarity of them so they attach to the opposite polarity particles and cause them to fall out that is a finding agent it makes beer and wine clear makes them clear so through history uh, the finding agents have been dictated by necessity for alcohol for one thing and by what was available at the time so a number of finding agents through history and I have some here I'll show you uh, went through a bunch of different things egg whites uh, milk was a finding agent blood uh, mustard somehow mustard was a finding agent if you put milk check this out if you put whole milk in a bottle of Pepsi or Coke you know, like decarbonate the Coke or Pepsi and then put milk in it whole milk in a day or two excuse me in a day or two you'll have crystal Pepsi or you know something that tastes really really bad but it's clear uh, let's see gelatin gelatin's another fine agent Irish moss there's a number of uh, commercial products now available. Uh, Biofine is one of them. Biofine is a is a vegan product. It sounds kind of like, uh, for whatever reason, I think that sounds kind of like it's made from beef. It's made from beef bones. Biofine, right? Um, carrageenan, which is, I believe, uh, part of the Irish moss, like. Irish moss has carrageenan in it, but they just bump it up a little bit more with the Irish moss and carrageenan. And then polychlor. Polychlor I have here. Polychlor is a um, is actually like a like a small. Well, it's pretty solid here. Like I don't use this stuff. You know, another good finding agent is thyme. Thyme. That's what I use. Thyme, because I mean I don't need this stuff in a hurry. So polychlor is little plastic pellets like little tiny 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 plastic pellets that's not what you think it might be that is polychlor on my white pants or black pants um, gelatin gelatin's another one yeah I don't have to show you gelatin it's just it's gelatin and uh, let's see isinglass yeah isinglass casillasol chitosan uh, and again they have different polarities you want to just Wikipedia it. it's that easy um, Isinglass they used to make windows out of this stuff and if I'm not mistaken it's made out of fish scales yeah, I'm pretty sure it's made out of fish scales I used to know all this stuff pretty pretty well inside and out Isinglass is a good uh, finding agent for beer. Then we got pectic enzyme. Pectic enzyme, you wouldn't think of it as being a finding agent, but if you have a, a haze in a beer, or a wine rather, from boiling the fruit, this will make the haze fall out. So pectic enzyme, I use this an awful lot, which is why I have such a, a big bag of white powder. Uh, let's see, bentonite. There's uh, some minerals that are used in fining. Bentonite is a is a clay. It's a mineral. Specifically, it's a clay. And uh, I use this one quite a bit, actually. It's a very, very useful item. Kind of grainy and requires a little bit of time. I think it takes tannins out of the... Uh, the wine that you're making as well and then there's the the greatest one of all for beer which is called Irish moss Irish moss is uh sorry oh 
Irish moss is all over my pants and my chair. Irish moss is a seaweed. It's dried seaweed. I'm going to point this down so you can see it. I uh, add this to the boil when you're making beer for the last 10 minutes. Uh, 10, yeah, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And I believe the carrageenan, it really does make a difference. It really, really does make a difference. I don't make beer without this stuff. Clears it up pretty quick. So, those are, uh, if I forgot any, if, if I uh, watch this video while I'm editing and I've forgotten any, maybe I'll add them to the video in words. Like, uh, I'll add them right down here. I'll add them here. But anyway, those are finding agents. So finding agents are uh, very useful to the wine and beer making process if you don't have time. And again, if you don't have time, you can also use a filter. Filter, I guess, would be considered a finding agent uh, in a sense because you can remove haze or particulate matter. I have a plate filter and a, and a you know vessel to, to pump it through. Never use it. I have used it, and it's just not even worth it. Like if if you really need alcohol that bad, just go to the liquor store and buy some alcohol. I think that's the point. Finding agents, some of them very useful, some of them very difficult to use, some of them disgusting. Blood, you want to add some blood to your wine or beer? Probably not, right? Uh, mustard might be kind of interesting. Egg whites, maybe not so much. And uh, polychlor, you want to add plastic to your wine? Oh yeah, yeah, Isinglass and um, Casil or no, not Isinglass, Casilosol and Kytosan. Casilosol, they're both in some way related to um, silica. Or, or um, let's see, Casilosol is silica, which is derived, was derived at one point from crustacean shells like lobsters, crabs shrimp shit like that stuff like that sorry stuff like that and then uh, uh, one of them Isinglass or Kytosan I think Kytosan might be from the swim bladders of fish traditionally probably you know a petroleum distillate uh, derived product nowadays as most things are but yeah, from swim bladders of fish and from lobster shells. That's awesome. That's Jersey Jim Fish right there, not Jersey Jim Home Brewing. That's Jersey Jim Fish. That's why I'm so fascinated by this stuff. I forgot to mention that the reason I had to rack this now is that uh, I had to transfer from the primary to the secondary is that yesterday I took the gravity and it was uh, 0 0.030. I think it means it made... Uh, roughly 14% alcohol there's still another about 3% alcohol to make so that's why I had to come out because if you do it too late you risk the chance of oxygenating the wort which is bad for a wort that's at its secondary that's why it's in glass now not in plastic the plastic I have uh, some cleanser in so this the bent night I was going to measure it out but I, th I think I'm just going to eyeball it I'm going to put a lot in bottle number one. I'm going to put about half that amount in bottle number two. And about a quarter of the total amount in bottle number three. And this was uh, two, or no, four tablespoons of bentonite. Oh, are you kidding me? Four tablespoons of bentonite in uh, a cup of water. So, yeah, this is sanitized. It's a, it's a thermometer. Now, it's been uh, four days since I added the bentonite to all four of these containers. A few interesting things happened, and, and one kind of primary mistake. You're not supposed to add bentonite to a 
you know, like an existing fermentation. So this one, as you can see, I uh, hope it shows up. I put a light behind it so you can probably you might be able to see it. But this cleared quite a bit. You can see the line of, uh, of lees down here. Um, you know, probably another month or two that'll be clear. I could add more bentonite to it, but I'm in no hurry for it. That's a nice thing about wine. It doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take immediate response to make things happen. They're going to happen eventually anyway. So a few interesting things happened here. This one looks, looks really cloudy. This is the one I added the most bentonite to. This one half as much and this one half as much as that. These two look about the same. This one still has a lot of cloudiness in it. And I think that has to do with, I poured this one first. The yeast were still very much suspended because it was an active fermentation. So the yeast are still in suspension here. It has settled out some of the, uh, you know, some of the heavier stuff here. A second ago, if I can find the footage and edit it properly, uh, we added a tablespoon of bentonite to this one half a tablespoon to this one and a quarter tablespoon or a teaspoon and something to that one. This was on the 3rd of January. It is now the 27th of January and they are dry. I haven't, I haven't actually put a hydrometer on them but they haven't been fermenting. They are degassing because I moved them from the floor up here and yeah I'm kind of confused. Kind of confused but it does mean something that the one that I added the most bentonite to is very clear, uh, which had the most sediment in it, possibly, with the exception of the third, which, like I said, is why I'm confused. The middle one, which should have not had so much sediment in it, is still cloudy. The third one, which I had the least amount of uh, finding agent two is very clear. The first one is very clear. Middle one, not so much. Don't know what that means, but that's how it turns out sometimes. I have to have to figure that one out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rack this into uh, this carboy. Let it clear up a little bit more. And this carboy here is way too large. For the volume, you know, like I have three gallons here, a little less than three gallons. This is a five gallon carboy. Don't have any more gallon jugs, they're all, uh, or three gallon carboys, they're all with other bits and pieces of alcohol in them. So we're going to rack these into the five gallon. We're going to take up the headspace. This is a sanitized carboy down here. We're going to take up the headspace with CO2. And if you want to see how to rack them, uh, check out how to rack wine. Uh, it's kind of important. We got everything all all labeled up and uh, sanitized, all ready to go. One thing I wanted to add is that detailed records are imperative because if you come across a a good recipe, you know, an exceptional recipe, you want to be able to recreate it. So you can emulate that recipe by keeping detailed records. So. That includes the book and also uh, on the bottle, on the carboy, so you know exactly what's going on. We got the methaglin down here, you can't see that, but it's over there. We got the carrot parsnip wine, the apple jack, the theoretical apple jack, got the spiced cider, which smells absolutely phenomenal. I can't wait to try that. Pineapple banana wine, got an empty uh, keg over there, corny keg. So, making beer later in the week, going to be forging later in the week, and hopefully fishing. Uh, slamming Sam the barber. Tied up some, uh, some herring jigs for me, herring shad jigs for me. Uh, going to, you know, hopefully if uh, the weather is nice, going to be trying these out. Real excited for that. Found some hops in my fridge. I just switched the keg out. Found some hops, so all set to brew later in the week. It's going to be a great week. Alright, so we've finally come to the end of the Applejack video. So, what I have here is a racking cane full of water. I've capped off one end with my very clean thumb. 
And if you were making Applejack, which I am not, oh, you'd probably want to make a big mess like I just made there. Alright, so you need to transfer it into something that's not glass. So down here I have a plastic bucket. Right? My primary fermenter. I think this is a gallon and a half maybe, something like that. But you'd want to transfer it all into something that can freeze or potentially freeze. You don't want it freeze, you know, like frozen like a block. If you freeze the entire volume of liquid, and you don't want it frozen block solid, you want it kind of crystalline, uh, crystals throughout, uh, which requires a bit of mixing through the freezing process. All right, we'll just leave that go there. You get the idea. You want to transfer it into something that can be uh, can withstand freezing. If you froze it in glass, the glass would break, might potentially break. So. What I have here is a plastic food container. And I thought of measuring this out and giving you guys the math behind volume and alcohol content. But I mean, if you just want to make something not so alcoholic, more alcoholic, this is what you, you probably want to do. Alright, so we're just gonna make the whiskey is 35% alcohol, 70% alcohol, let's see. It is. Forty percent alcohol. So it's forty percent alcohol. We've got and we'll bump it up to I mean we we probably quadrupled the amount of liquid which would bring that 40 down to about 10, 10% alcohol right there, about 10% alcohol in here. So we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to, we're going to freeze it. Now, I don't have a freezer and if this doesn't work, I might be, I might be prompted to actually get a refrigerator uh, and freezer to make this happen. If I get a refrigerator and freezer, it will uh, allow me to make lagered beer, which is another big benefit of it. I, I, I mean, I'd have the ability to refrigerate my food more so than, you know, St. Pauli girl. She does a pretty good job, and she dispenses beer, cold beer, right? So this is going to go outside. It's going to be, it's going to be uh, 19, I think, tonight. So we're going to put this on the porch so this is uh this is round two of how to theoretically freezer distill alcohol uh with without a freezer i mean you could put it in the freezer and it would it would freeze there'd be ice crystals in it but i don't have a freezer so here's what's going on if this doesn't work for for whatever reason it should work in theory it should work uh, I'll get a freezer within a week. I'll get a freezer. So here's what I got going on. I got <clears throat> Big bag of ice there and I got a bunch of salt so I'm gonna bust up the Schiffer rope the Schiffer robe of ice and then I'm gonna add three pounds of salt three pounds 30 ounces I'm gonna dump this which is the tea I mean it could be it's tea and, and whiskey right it's tea and and shitty whiskey um, so we'll go ahead and add this to this Erlenmeyer flask Yeah, that's cold. Wow, that's that 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 seriously is not going to take long. I, like I feel like I got frostbite just from that. Uh, I leave it go for like 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to go start a drawing, and uh, we'll come back to it in a minute.
and uh, in a minute, yeah, shouldn't take long. That's awesome. Never done that before. That's freaking awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. Here, I'm gonna shut the lid, and we'll leave it go for a little while. All right. So this is freaking awesome. This is awesome. A few things happened since uh. It didn't take long. It's been uh, it's been 30 minutes. A few things have happened. Uh, first off, you ever seen those idiots that uh, <clears throat> they take um, salt and pour it on their arm, and they put an ice cube on top? You ever seen those idiots on YouTube? I am now one of those idiots on YouTube because uh, my my finger I, I don't have any feeling in my finger right now. I have I have been an idiot on YouTube for a while. Uh, apparently um, so anyway a couple things happened I again clean a few things up and lo and behold it is freaking perfect wait till you see this wait until you see this but what I did is I I drank it I drank the iced tea and whiskey so it, it's gone it's gone what I did is I matched you know, like I, I poured isopropyl alcohol and green tea. The same, you know, like this is, you can't drink this. And some green tea. And I matched that amount in this thing. Uh, so it's been, it's been 36 minutes. It took me six minutes to do that. And it took me a second to drink the alcohol. But it's frozen. It's perfect. Uh, it's, this is brilliant it's brilliant look at that I don't know if you can see that it's like a it's like a slurpee right so all right let me uh, move the camera closer and I'll uh, show you what's going on here all right so this is it the isopropyl alcohol and the tea so what has happened here and that's a little too frozen actually a little bit too frozen uh, I'm not gonna put my hands on it cuz uh, I'm not an idiot on YouTube I don't imagine the alcohol is frozen I think we can invert this and the alcohol will fall out first but that is the amount of isopropyl alcohol that I added to it in the beginning the same amount of whiskey that I added to it in the beginning I didn't measure it but that's about it it's uh, two shots that's what I figured on that's it that's freaking absolutely awesome I mean I need a freezer but this worked so I'll put the freezer off for a little while I might buy a boat something like that something useful I don't need a freezer Oh yeah, and uh, I, I actually another thing that happened that was really really good is that I cleaned my glove. I got salt all over it. Last time I used that, I was fishing for uh, blueback herring. Uh, it was a movie. Um, success with Sculpey. Success with Sculpey and the epoxy rope jig. That was the movie. That's the last time I wore these. And they still kind of stink, but they're a little cleaner than they were. But, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think I left it in a little bit too long, actually. Yeah, I definitely left it in a little bit too long. But that's it. How, that, I mean, that's how to make Applejack right there. That would be Applejack. That would be Applejack. That's what you want. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks for joining me. I guess uh, I'll see you next time. I got a lot of nonsense going on right now, so there'll uh, be another movie up real soon. Uh, see ya. All right, let's take a look. Now that is a woodcut. That looks pretty good.